Hi everybody, out here enjoying a very beautiful day, out here uh, late October 2023. One of the first sunny days we've had in a very long time. It's nice to actually see the sunlight again. Uh, there's a little bit of clouds in the sky, but not a whole lot. Um, really nice seeing the beautiful fall foliage. I'll turn this way so you can see some of these maple leaves on the trail there, how the sunlight's coming through them. Sugar maple. Really beautiful. <clears throat> but uh, what's the purpose of this video? The purpose of this video is, got to thinking about this whole thing of why the King James Bible is perfect, why uh, you need to believe that the King James Bible is perfect, you need to have faith that, uh, that it is the perfect Word of God. And if you don't have that faith that it's the perfect Word of God, you'll always approach it with doubt, you'll always approach it with, well, if I can't explain something, I'll just... In it, if I don't understand something, I'll just explain it away with Greek and Hebrew. Um, it's not the right way to approach the Word of God. Um, the King James Bible has been proven for hundreds of years by lots of Bible-believing Christians. You can uh, absolutely put your faith in the written Word of God. Um, how can you have faith in Jesus Christ without faith in the Word of God? That's my question for you. If you're a Recept this nut out there or something. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by your own imagination, your own intellect. No, it comes by the word of God, the written scriptures. But they got to thinking about this whole thing, the importance of the word of God. Show you another beautiful tree here. Right there, this beautiful beech tree behind me. American beech. Really neat. And of course the apple tree here. Whoa. You can see some little beautiful red apples on there. But um, I have a challenge for you, my viewers. I want to do a study on the um, supernatural perfection of the King James Bible. And there are some definite things that the King James Bible has that the original autographs do not have. Uh, the order of the books in the Hebrew Old Testament ends with 2 Chronicles. It does not end with uh, Malachi. And if you look at the order of the books of the Hebrew Old Testament in your King James Bible, it actually lines up with the premillennial coming of Jesus Christ. Uh, that will be one of the things. The uh, two middle verses in the King James Bible. Uh, that will be another one. Um, you know, anything at all that you can think of that the King James Bible has that the original autographs would not have had or the originals Greek and Hebrew or whatever. Nobody can say what the original autographs had because no one's ever seen them alive today. And nobody in Paul's day, when he was writing the New Testament, he says to Timothy, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Uh, Paul was not referring to the original autographs. Paul was referring to copies of copies. So to say this weird thing that you have to have the original autographs or the Greek and the Hebrew, no you don't. Um, I mean, obviously... The King James Bible has been published and printed more than uh, Greek and Hebrew and obviously the original autographs. Um, I mean, just blown the doors off of them. So that's another advantage to the King James Bible. The Word was published and the Word got out there and, and uh, God did amazing things with the King James Bible. But um, if you can think of something... Put it in the comments down below and I will include it in my study. And uh, I think it'd be really neat to really just magnify the Word of God, the King James Bible. Lift it up to its proper position as the greatest book of all time. And there, again, that's not my opinion. That is a documented historical fact. No book in history has been able to be printed and published and passed out and read and studied and critiqued and everything like the King James Bible, the authorized version of 1611, if you want to call it that. Uh, again, understanding that 1611, it came out as the authorized version, and then later became nicknamed kind of the King James Version, and it stuck. You know, and I like the King James Bible instead of version. I get it. Um, but uh, anything at all. I know there was somebody wrote a comment about uh, something. I forget what it was, about the perfection of the King James Bible. 
you look at the text and some of the number, the biblical numbers and things, this verse lining up with that and whatever else, and it was amazing. Really neat. Anything that you can think of like that, put it in the comments, and uh, I want to do a study on that, showing that uh, we don't have to be ashamed of our King James Bibles. We don't have to feel like we have some kind of a, a second rate, oh, it's just not as good as the original Greek and Hebrew. No, that's not true. Um, again, the, uh, the way that you fight the devil's system is not by putting the Bible in some hard to reach area. You know, it's kind of like the thing of uh, protecting yourself with the Second Amendment. Well, let me get a, a firearm and I'm going to put it in a locked case inside of a locked safe inside of a locked room. Um, well, when the thief breaks in in the middle of the night, you're not going to get to your gun very quickly. But that's what a lot of people do that profess to be Christians with the Word of God. They lock it away. Well, it's in the, um, <clears throat> it's in the, the Greek and the Hebrew. That's the perfect Word of God. Though we'll call the Bible, the King James Bible will say, the Word of God says to you today, you know, and then they say, oh, the King James Bible is God's perfect Word? No. It's in the Greek and Hebrew. Oh, well, what's the Greek and the Hebrew? Well, the Greek and the Hebrew would be the Textus Receptus and the Masoretic Hebrew text. Oh, okay, so there is only one of those. No, no, there's multiple editions. Oh, okay, well, which edition is the right one? Well, um, hmm. if I say Erasmus, that won't work because they, they didn't use the, you know, um, the Alziva brothers. Well, they were kind of the later thing there. And Stephanus, Beza, no, uh, well, um, uh, well, well, uh, the original. And that's where they'll get you to. You say, have you ever seen the original? No. But uh, it's kind of like Jesus, you know, we, we haven't seen the manifest word and we haven't seen the written word. <laughs> uh, well, I'm sorry about that. And you have no authority to, to make that statement, by the way. Uh, you haven't seen God's perfect written word. There's no such book on the earth. Well, then you're not a Bible-believing Christian. Stop calling yourself one. You're a liar, you're a deceiver. It's just the way that it is. So, like I said, my challenge to all of you out there, if you have some kind of a thing that's in the King James Bible and not in Greek or Hebrew or whatever else, put it in the comments down below and I'll include it in the study. So there's my challenge to you. Thank you for watching.